Well, here I go again with that U word. I've never done this. I want to do it. And it's going to be a little different than when I've done list videos and whatnot. But today, I just want to give you guys some underrated movies in my collection that I highly recommend. What's up, you guys? Nick at the Lost River Drive-In, and today I'm not doing a specific number or anything like that. I just wanted to show you guys some underrated movies in my collection that I recommend you watch if you haven't already, or if you have watched them and you weren't a fan, that you give another chance to, because I think they're really solid. And the first one I want to talk about is Shark Night from 2011. Shark Night is super fun. Like, I don't care what anybody says. Like, obviously, when we come talking about shark movies, creature features, you're going to think of movies like Jaws. You're going to think of movies like Piranha. Shark Night's really fun. Now, this movie was released in 3D, and I've never seen it in 3D. I didn't watch it until a couple years ago when I blind bought it because I have this weird thing of before I go on my family vacation every year to a large body of water, I like to watch movies like this, partially because I know it'll never happen where I'm going at least, but... Part of it is because I'm sick and maybe I want it to. I don't know. I can't explain. Don't judge me. But Shark Knight is super fun. This movie is definitely a movie that doesn't take itself super seriously. Now, it's not as silly as Piranha 3D or, you know, God forbid, forbid Piranha 3 Double D, which is a fun movie, but very different tones. But it's PG-13. It leans a little bit more and, you know, less into the gore and the violence of it and more into the fun and uh, kind of big over-the-top action sequences in a shark movie and I really really dig it I think that this movie got a bad rap because it was PG-13 because it came out in 3D and because it came out in the 2010s it came out in 2011 so it kind of unnecessarily gets a bad rap just for some of those things but this movie is really really solid now I'm pretty sure these codes some of these codes are going to be good still some of them aren't going to be i'm going to show them and if you guys want to try to redeem them and they still work have at it but there is a digital code for shark knight and yeah shark knight 3d 2011 first underrated movie that i recommend so the next one i want to talk about and you guys are going to see a common theme here you're not going to see movies like Halloween Ends or Jason Takes Manhattan or anything like that. These are a little more obscure movies that I think truly are underrated. And the next one is Disturbia. Now, I remember when this movie came out, it was a decent deal. You know, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people found it to be thrilling, found it to be interesting, well acted. But it just kind of fizzled out. And part of that is because, you know, obviously... With movies like this that don't get sequels and then in the time period that it came out coming out in the late 2000s it's just one of those things where it's like there was it was so oversaturated at the time that even if you had a good movie if it wasn't a franchise or, or a part of a franchise or spinoff or anything like that it just didn't have legs long term that's a shame because disturbia rules now you guys know <clears throat> i'm a big shia labeouf fan I always have been. I know that he has gotten himself into a lot of trouble in his life and rightfully had to pay for it. You know, lost a lot of his jobs and, and really no one would hire him in Hollywood. And he really, you know, he went to rehab. He really got his life together. And I'm, I'm really, really happy for that because you guys know I'm big on people really changing their lives and, and for the better and really adapting and adjusting and, and redeeming themselves. So I'm glad to see that now. I don't feel bad supporting Shia now. And this movie's awesome. I mean, this movie kicks ass. It's like, Shia's super funny in it. I really, really like his relationship with the girl. Uh, her name is uh, Sarah Romer, I think. Raymer, whatever. I really like their relationship in this movie. I love his relationship with his mom and the dynamic between him and his neighbor. I think it's super interesting. And I really think that, like, at a lot of points in the movie, you're wondering if he is overreacting and if he's reading into something that's not actually there. But... Obviously, when the twist happens, it's not you know really a twist. It just kind of kicks up to 11, but it's a super fun movie that's really well acted. It's got some surprises. It's got some nice, tense moments, and I just really think overall this movie freaking rules. This one doesn't have a digital code, but Disturbia. Check Disturbia out. This came out in 07. Oh, man, 07, the year of Shia with Transformers and Disturbia. Disturbia, watch it. Buy it.
Love it. The next one is one that is like kind of starting to have a renaissance nowadays, which is really cool because I've always felt like this movie was good. And I felt like this movie never got its day and finally seems to start, you know, start to be getting it now. But that is Jennifer's Body. Look, Jennifer's Body rules. If you are a, a fan of creature features or, you know, schlocky horror movies, you're going to love Jennifer's Body. I have heard complaints about this movie that I simply cannot get behind. The acting's bad. No, it's not, though. I, I really don't think it is at all. Uh, you know, the CG. Okay, I'll hear you on some of the CG, but again, time period. We have to take these things into account. The CG was not great pretty much across the board during this time period, especially in horror movies like this. I think about Fright Night 2011 with some of the CG where you're just kind of like, eh, same time period. Makes sense. There's a lot about this movie that people complain about, but at the end of the day, the idea of this movie was a succubus that eats people. Yeah, the movie nails it. I mean, wh like, what did they not deliver on in, in that aspect? There, there's one thing this movie didn't deliver on. One thing this movie didn't deliver on that I will always, always hold his feet to the fire for. Jennifer's body. Look, you marketed the movie this way. You put a bunch of it in the movie, teases, things like that. We didn't get to see Jennifer's body. It's a really, really big bummer that I'm still not okay with. Honestly. But I think a lot of the hate for this movie is just because people don't like Megan Fox. And, like, I don't think she's, like, an, an Oscar-winning actress or anything like that. But I feel like what she's cast in, she always does the role well enough. Like, in Transformers, she's kind of supposed to be the, the kind of hot chick that is there for Sam you know to ogle and she does that well and obviously she grows into that character a little bit but that was the on paper that was the beginning of it and in this movie she is here for us to enjoy looking at like that is it's in the title of the movie next up is one that you've probably heard about or you know the guy that stars in it but you might not know anything about it that's Nightcrawler from 2013 starring Jake Gyllenhaal this movie rules I remember the first time I saw this movie, it was really interesting to see Jake in, in a role like this. And I know he's done similar roles, but like I haven't seen a lot of those types of roles from him. This movie is like, again, kind of like what I was just talking about with Transformers, really playing on us as humans and our desire for, for fame, for power, for money, for attention, for you know, feeding our own egos. And the lengths that he will go to for that are genuinely insane like genuinely you're like man jake i love you as an actor and you're playing this role super well but oh my god i feel icky and that's pretty much how you feel watching this movie this movie it's two hours long but it's a really brisk two hours it moves along really nicely it's a really really good movie it's surprising it's kind of shocking it's it's depraved in a lot of ways but again i think it plays on the human condition and i love that about this movie Nightcrawler is a super underrated movie that I don't hear enough people talk about. You know, it is not the movie you hear people talk about when it comes to Jake Gyllenhaal. But there is also a digital code. If that is still good, someone snatch that bad boy up. But yeah, Nightcrawler, super underrated. If you haven't seen it, see it. If you have seen it and you didn't like it, you're wrong. Next up is another horror movie that not enough people talk about. It was kind of a flash in the pan. It came and it went when it came out. And I mean, nobody talks about this movie nowadays. I think it is the peak of the found footage genre and that is as above so below one of my favorite found footage movies probably only behind the Blair Witch Project look I have talked about this movie before in live streams on the podcast you guys know I'm a big fan of this movie there's a lot of reasons why I'm a big fan of this movie not only do I think the acting is really strong not only is the setting really really just it makes you uneasy it is very claustrophobic but on top of all of that there is a story here, a mythology here that it really dives into. And it's very like science fiction-y. It's very like fantastical. It doesn't come across as a straight up horror movie. But we get to a point where our characters are literally in hell. At least we think. And the world is kind of upside down. And up is down and all this kind of stuff. And there's all these mirrors and these parallels. And I'm like, bro, this is a mindfuck at like it's highest form this movie rules i love this movie so much this movie completely flew under my radar when it came out i didn't see it in theaters or anything like that i blind bought this movie and i absolutely love it i cannot recommend as above so below enough if you are a found footage fan if you are a 
you know, more of a fantasy horror fan, I think you're going to find a lot in this movie. And I really, really hope you'll give this a chance if you have not already, because I think this movie absolutely fucking rules. As above, so below. You didn't like it? You're wrong. Next up is going to be one of my favorite films from the, for, of this character ever. It is not horror related again. You guys know I love this actor portraying this character. Some of you might be going, okay, it's not horror. You love the actor portraying this comic book character. Some of you have already drawn where I'm going here. If you haven't, you're about to know. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Dude, I love this movie so, so much. Not only do I think Andrew Garfield is the best Spider-Man, I said it, I don't care, I will always maintain that, I think he's the best Spider-Man. Some of that is nostalgia too, because I was a teenager when his movies came out, so I could relate to high school Peter Parker at the time. I grew up on Toby, so don't think I'm like, you know, dumping on Toby. No, I love Toby too. Tom Holland's my least favorite. Still think he's good, but he's my least favorite. But Andrew just embodies everything that I think of, that, that sarcastic, witty Peter Parker, the, sometimes too smart for his own good. Um, he's suave enough, but he's still kind of awkward. I love everything about Andrew in this role. I love the first Amazing Spider-Man movie, but I think that this movie improves upon that movie in pretty much every way. The emotional core of this movie with Gwen and Peter, oh my God, Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield. I mean, I'm telling you right now, their chemistry, obviously I know they dated in real life, so that definitely factors into it, but their chemistry is electric. Their performances, the way they bounce off of each other. I mean, that alone draws you into this movie. I absolutely love Jamie Foxx's Electro. He's a little hammy and over the top, but I really, really dig that. I think Dane DeHaan, when he becomes a Green Goblin, his look is kind of like gross, and I, and I dig it as well. But I just love the theme of this movie. I love what this movie plays on. It really tugs on your heartstrings, and when it is action-packed, it is action-packed. I absolutely love the sequence with Electro at the power plant bouncing off of the stacks and it's playing he's like playing the itsy bitsy spider it is just this movie in so many ways visually this movie is incredible like visually mark webb i i just incredible i i'm really really bummed we never got the amazing spider-man 3 i'm happy we got no way home so i could see andrew come back and toby come back but i really wanted to see andrew continue on in this role and i'm still going to maintain that i want to see him be sony's spider-man universe spider-man because i think he fits it perfectly and my boy deserves better so the amazing spider-man 2 one of my favorite spider-man movies you didn't like it you're wrong now guys, I could go all day with this because I have a lot of really unpopular opinions. Movies that I love that a lot of people don't love. So like, I could do this all day, but I'm not gonna keep you here for a half hour. So I'm pulling one more off the shelf, we're rolling with it, and then we're cutting this bad boy. And the last one I pulled off the shelf, I wanted to pull off Child's Play 2019. So shout out to Child's Play 2019. That movie is underrated. I don't care what anybody says. But I pulled off Shutter Island. Now you might be going, DiCaprio? Scorsese? How, how can you say that this is underrated? Hear me out. When this movie came out, it got pretty good reviews. People liked it. And then, poof, gone. Who talks about Shutter Island anymore? You, you tell me. Who talks about Shutter Island? No one. No one talks about it anymore. But it's a damn good movie. Mark Ruffalo's in it, too. Freaking uh, Michelle Williams. Come on. This movie's got a great cast. Obviously, great writer-director. Obviously, the settings are beautiful. I think the cinematography in this movie, and I said the C word that Christian hates, but I, this is a movie where you literally can't deny it. I don't know shit about cinematography. But when you watch this movie, you go, God damn, that looks pretty. Man, these settings are beautiful. God, this is just mm, chef's kiss. This is one of those movies. I think it's acted super well. I think it's ominous. I think it's eerie. The mystery, although you have hints of it throughout the movie, and you may be drawing your own conclusion, like, I think this is this. And then when you get there, you're like, called it. Still, that might be the case, but leading up to it, there's a lot of nice, intriguing mystery in this movie. It is a nice ride. I think that this movie, although I don't think it's the peak of DiCaprio and Scorsese's like you know marriage here on film, this is definitely up there for me. I think that this movie is a super, super good movie with great emotional beats, great mystery, great suspense. Well, I mean, can't go wrong. Shutter Island. Yes, I know, it was not underrated when it first came out, but nobody talks about it anymore, and they should, because it rules! So yeah, guys, this is just volume one, I guess, of underrated movies that I recommend. Christian does similar videos on his channel, he's been doing it for like well over a year now. That's not where the impetus for this came from, I was just simply going, well, I've been doing lists of like, 
you know, my least favorite horror sequels, my favorite horror sequels, my favorite horror remakes, underappreciated horror remakes. And when I did underappreciated, it really made me think, why don't I just do a video on like underrated movies in general, movies that I love that I don't feel like get enough attention. And I feel like every movie I named today is a movie that I do feel like deserves more love. And I think some of you guys watching this are probably, there was probably a movie or two that I pulled out that you're like, yes, finally somebody's singing this movie's praises. And really, that is the point of doing a video like this. So I hope you guys like this. If you did, I'll do more installments of it. You know, I'll do more underrated movies that I recommend. Part two, part three. Let me know in the comments down below. Please, please leave a like on this video. Share it on social media. Follow me on social media. Become a patron for a dollar today. And this is Nick at the Lost River Drive-In, and I am pulling out.